Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make an off the shoulder top. For this one, we kept it restrained and went with a more modern vibe. There's a clean double band, textured moss body, and some long double cuffs because I love that look and it keeps your palms nice and toasty. Speaking of, if you're looking to stay warm and toasty in your next make, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet patterns and designs that'll keep the cold weather at bay with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 275 grams of yarn, and that's 450 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us how you store your yarn. We have a bunch of storage bins in the garage. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. And double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and I'll explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab a 5mm hook and start off by making a chain the height that we'd like for our shoulder band to be. I'd like for mine to be just about 2.5 inches or 7 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 12. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first double crochet row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 3. That chain 3 doesn't count as a stitch, we just want the height, and we're all going to yarn over preparing for a double crochet. Then we're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook. So bring our hook down. Into that fourth chain, we're going to yarn over, pull through. Then when we have three loops on our hook, we're all going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following chain, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and continue with one double crochet into every chain. Now that our row one is all finished up, let's get started on our row two. So that's going to be more double crochets, but they're going to be within the back loops. So getting started on every row for our double crochets, we're going to chain three and flip our work. Now we're all going to yarn over. We're going to insert our hook into that last stitch from our previous rows, back loop, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, again, yarn over into that next stitch's back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And that's pretty much it. We're going to continue with one back loop double crochet into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. At the end of the row, we're going to repeat, so chain three, flip our work, and then continue with one back loop double crochet into every stitch again. Now we're going to continue on making our back loop double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases until we have a shoulder band that can stretch around our shoulders. And we want to make sure that we're all ending on an even number of rows, and then I will meet you back. I am back with my shoulder band. I have a total of 62 rows and my length is just about 28 inches or 72 centimeters unstretched. Now from here we're going to seam it up. So all we're going to do is just lay our piece on top of each other making sure that it's not twisted and then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're then going to pull our working yarn through and do a chain up of one to secure. Then we're going to do a single crochet row working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So go ahead and insert your hook into that next stitch into the front panel, find that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook in through there, and single crochet them together. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, 
insert, into that next stitch into the back panel, insert and single. And we're going to continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. So now that we have just finished up our seam, we're now going to single crochet along the bottom of our shoulder band. So let's all start by making sure the work is slipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we just did is now going to be along the inside. And now what we're going to do from here is chain one, that's not going to count as a stitch, and all we're going to do is put two single crochets into every side row. So let's get this started. This is my first side row I have right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop and single crochet once, and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. And that's it. Let's do the next one. This is my following side row. I'm going to insert my hook in through there and do two single crochets again. So there's one and there's two. And I'm going to continue with two single crochets into every side row. When we make our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space that we made and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so now that our single crochet row along the bottom is all finished up, we did do a chain up of one and cut. Now right before we get started on the front panel's underarm, we're going to need to insert our stitch markers to separate the front with the armholes. So we're going to want to try on our piece, and then we're going to start by inserting our stitch marker into the stitch that's right where the corner of our underarm is within the front, and then insert our following stitch marker where the corner of our underarm is within the back. And we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So we're going to be inserting our other front panel stitch marker into a stitch that is an odd number away from our first stitch marker that is including that stitch marker and I've actually inserted my stitch marker into the 41st stitch. That's just about 10 and a half inches or 27 centimeters that I have for my front panel. And then I'm going to insert my following stitch marker into the stitch that I have at the corner of my underarm along the back. And then from there go ahead and adjust however you need to. So just to let you guys know my numbers, I have a total of 41 stitches from stitch marker to stitch marker for my front panel and back panel. And then for the stitches that I have in between my stitch markers for my armhole, I have a total of 21 stitches on both sides. And now that we have everything separated, we can get started on our front panel's underarm. So now that our shoulder band is all finished up, we're going to get started on our underarm for our front panel. So let's all start by grabbing our same category 4 yarn, make a slip knot, and grabbing our same 5 millimeter hook. From here, we're all going to start by making an even number chain that reaches from about 1 inch underneath our underarm down to where we want the bottom of this top to be, so cropped, full length, or a dress. I'd like for mine to be full length, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 60, and that's 13 and a half inches or 35 centimeters. And I actually already have mine all finished up, so I'm just going to be doing a small sample size with you. And now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our first row. So let's all start by blocking off that last chain and doing a chain two. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as our chain. And from here, we're going to single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So counting that out together, here's one, two, three, which is the chain that we blocked off, and four. So into that fourth chain, we're going to bring our hook down, insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And that is going to form our first chain space for this row. Let's do that again. From here, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch into the following, insert with another single crochet, and now all together we should have one and two chain spaces. Let's do this again. Chain one, skip a stitch into that following, insert with a single crochet for a total of one, two, three chain spaces. And we're going to continue to chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet into the following until we have two chains left. We are now at the end of our row one, and we now need to do an increase. So since we should all have two chains left, what we're going to do is start with a chain one, skip that following stitch, and then into the following, which should be the last, we're going to do our increase, which is going to be a single, half double, and double crochet. So we're going to skip that second to last, and then into that last, insert with a single crochet first, 
Then with a half double crochet, so insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and then to finish off our increase, a double crochet. So insert, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And our increase always needs to be these three stitches into this last stitch in this same sequence. So single, half double, double, making sure that the double crochet is along the outside. Because if we just do an increase of three single crochets, it'll actually start to curve backwards a little bit. Now getting started on our falling row, which is our row two, or any even number row, we will not be doing any increases. So we're going to start with a chain two. And like our previous row, that first chain is gonna count as our turning chain. That second chain is gonna count as our chain, and we're gonna flip our work. So getting started on a row two, or any even number row, we are not gonna be doing any increases or decreases. So all we're gonna do is skip that first stitch, then into that following, insert with a single crochet. So we're gonna skip one, and into that following stitch, which should be the half double crochet from our increase, insert with a single crochet, and that should form our first chain space for this row. Now let's get started on the following one. Just like our previous row, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, and then into that following stitch, insert with a single crochet, and now our following stitch should be that chain space, so just insert your hook into that entire chain space that we have with one single crochet. And that's it, let's do that again. Chain one, skip a stitch into that following stitch, which is our chain space, insert with a single crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch into the following with a single, and that's it. We're just gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way down. So I've made my way all the way down with my second mesh stitch row. And I did leave my last two stitches just because I wanted to remind you that this last stitch can very easily be overlooked, causing for our numbers to be a little different for the falling row. So just to make sure that we're working into that last chain space that we have into that previous row, we're gonna skip one. I already did my chain one, so we're gonna skip that following stitch. And then into that last chain space from our previous row, we're gonna insert with a single crochet, and that makes it nice and blunt along the bottom. And now from here, we're going to do our row three or any odd number row. So it's gonna start off basically the same way that we did our row one. So let's all chain two and flip our work. Just to do the first one with you, we're all gonna start by skipping that first stitch, which should be our first single crochet from our previous row. And then into that following stitch, which is our chain space, we're gonna insert with a single crochet, forming our first chain space for this row. And from here, continue to chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into that following chain space until we have two stitches left so that we can do an increase together again. So we've made our way all the way down with our row three and we should all have one, two stitches left. And if it looks like we just have one stitch left, just make sure that you're pulling that last stitch apart a little bit so you can find that last chain space, kind of like how we did with our even number row. So what we're gonna do from here is chain one, skip one stitch, which is our single crochet, and then into that following chain space, we're going to insert with a single, there you can see our chain space a little bit better, with a half double and a double crochet. And that's it. From here, you're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we have an underarm portion that can reach from mid underarm over to the front of our body, making sure that the point of our increase end can reach the stitch marker stitch that we have within our shoulder band. And we do wanna make sure that our tail end, so where our first row is, is still staying roughly one inch underneath our underarm, because if it ends up a little bit lower than that, then we are gonna end up with a bigger sleeve, which is cute, but not what we want for this pattern. I'll meet you guys back right after an odd number row, or right after we do an increase, so that we can connect it straight into our shoulder band. All right, so I am back with my underarm portion. I have a total of nine rows, and this width is just about two inches, or five centimeters, and now we're going to connect it into our shoulder band, so let's grab that. So all we're going to do is insert our hook into that stitch marker stitch that we have, and then we're going to work across the front panel portion from stitch marker to stitch marker. So making sure that we're inserting our hook into that same stitch marker that we have, we are going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and now our underarm portion should be connected. And now let's work across our front panel. So since we just worked into this stitch, we're now going to slip stitch into that following available stitch. So I'm gonna bring my hook into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through everything, and now we're gonna flip our work. 
Now our body portion isn't going to have any increases or decreases. So all we're going to do from here, whenever we're along the base, working our way down towards the end, right after we slip stitched and flipped our work, we're going to chain one and we're going to skip that first stitch, which is the double crochet from our previous row. And then into that following, insert with a single crochet. That forms our first chain space for this row. Let's do that again. Chain one, skip a stitch, and then into that following, which should be our chain space from our previous row, insert with a single crochet. Now this portion is going to be the same as our previous row, so just chain one, skip a stitch into that next chain space, insert with a single crochet, and continue this to reach the end of the row. Now when we reach the end of the row, chain two, flip our work, and do our moss stitch working our way back up until we have two stitches left, just so I can show you how we're going to connect it into the base again. So I have just finished up my first body row, making my way all the way down to the end of the row. I did a chain two, flipped my work, and then did our moss stitch row, making my way all the way back up, leaving our last two stitches. And if it looks like we just have one stitch, just double check and make sure that we're not skipping over that last chain space because I have one stitch, which our second to last stitch is always going to be a single crochet. And then my last stitch, which is the first chain space that we made from our previous row. And all we're going to do, since I just single crocheted, I'm going to chain one. So this is per usual. Skip that following stitch, which is my second to last stitch. And then insert my hook into that last stitch, which should be our chain space with a single crochet. And now we're going to connect it into the base. So all we're going to do to connect it into the base again is find that next available stitch, slip stitch into there to close off our second row for our body. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. And since we're along the base, working our way down, we're going to chain one and flip our work. And now that our work is flipped, we're going to skip that first stitch, which is our single crochet, keeping in mind that those slip stitches don't count as anything. We just need those to connect. So we're going to skip that first stitch, which is our single crochet, and into that following, which is our chain space, insert with a single, forming our first chain space for this row, and then continue to chain one, skip a stitch, into that following, single crochet, and that's it. This is going to be the remainder of our body portions, and all we're going to do is continue to repeat these two rows with no increases and no decreases, and connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And I'll meet you back when we made our way across our shoulder band to our other front panel stitch marker. Our last row should be worked into there and we should all end along the bottom. So we have made our way across our body from stitch marker over to stitch marker. Now we're going to finish off our front panel with this portion's underarm and it's going to mirror the first underarm that we did. So since we should all be along the bottom, what we're going to do is do our moss stitch making our way all the way up so the same way that we've been doing it leaving our last four stitches. And remember, don't leave out that last chain space. So I made my way all the way up with my moss stitch row and I left one, two, three, four stitches. And if you can't see that fourth stitch, it's right here, it's that last chain space. And what we're gonna do from here is chain one and then do a decrease of three half double crochets. So what we're going to do is chain one, like I said, we're gonna skip that following stitch, which should be a single crochet, and we're going to yarn over. So into that following stitch, which should be a chain space, we're gonna insert our hook, pull through. Into that following stitch, or our second to last stitch, which should be our single crochet, insert your hook, pull through, and then into that last stitch from our previous row, which should be our chain space, insert, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all five of those loops. And that is our decrease of three half double crochets. And just like how we did the increase portion for our underarm, we're only going to be decreasing into every other row. So getting started on our falling row, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and then do our moss stitch all the way down. So we're all going to start by skipping that first stitch, which should be the top of our decrease of three and then inserting our hook into that next stitch, which should still be our chain space. So into that chain space, insert with a single crochet, that forms our first chain space for this row. And just like before, chain one, skip a stitch, into that next, which is our chain space, single crochet, and that is that. 
From here, we're just going to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows that we started this piece off with. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut. Alright, so I am back and the entirety of my front panel is all finished. I also went ahead and did the sleeve, but we'll get to that when we get there. But once in the entirety of our front panel is all finished up, we're going to repeat everything that we just did here for the front panel for the back panel. So we're going to make the same chain, the same amount of rows for our underarm, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the same stitch marker stitch that we have for the back panel, work across our back with our mesh stitches, and then finish it off with the same underarm portion. Once we have that, I will meet you back so you can seam everything up. So now that both our front and back panel are all finished up, let's seam our panels together. So let's all start by flipping our work wrong side out, and then we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now we're going to do a single crochet seam, so let's all start by finding our first available stitch into the front panel. Insert your hook. Find that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. Next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single, and once more into that next stitch into the front, next stitch into the back, and single. And we're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back so we can get started on our sleeve. So now that everything is seamed up, we're going to flip our work right side out, and then we're going to get started on our sleeve. So first things first, we're going to be inserting our hook into a stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. Then we're going to do a single crochet row. So for our single crochet row, working our way up and then down our underarm portions, we're going to be alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row, but we're starting with two single crochets. So let's all start by finding that first side row that we have. Now it should be the side of this first decrease that we have right here. So since we're starting with two, we're going to find that top loop and into that top loop, insert with two single crochets. So there's one, and into that same top loop with a second single crochet. Now this is my following side row. I'm going to insert my hook in through there with just one. Let's do this again. This is my following side row, which is my decrease side row. We're going to be putting two single crochets into there. So find that top loop with one, insert into that top loop with two single crochets, and then this is my following side row, insert my hook into there with one single crochet. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way up. Then once we reach our shoulder band portion, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way around. And then when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, into our shoulder band, continue to alternate between one to two single crochets into our side rows, remembering to start with two single crochets. And I'll meet you back at the end of this row. So my first single crochet row for my sleeve is all finished. Right before we finish up this row, we are all going to want to count out the amount of stitches that we have for this first row. If we have an odd number of stitches, then we are going to be adding one extra single crochet into that last side row because we all need to end on an even number. For those of you that are lucky enough to end on an even number, you guys are good to go. Just hang tight for two seconds. For those of us that do need to add an extra stitch, I do end on 49 stitches. I'm going to insert my hook into that same last side row with an extra single crochet. So now I have 50 stitches, which is an even number. Now from here, we're going to slip stitch into that chain space, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and now our row one is finished. Now getting started on our row two, which is just more moss stitch rows, you're going to chain two. That first chain still counts as a turning chain. That second chain still counts as a chain, and we are going to flip our work. And just like for our body, what we are going to do is skip that first stitch from our previous row, and then single crochet into the next, forming our first chain space. Now really quick tip before we get started, this is my first stitch from our previous row. It's going to look like we have an extra stitch right here, but that actually doesn't count as a stitch, that's the slip stitch that we made to close off our first row. So whenever we want to find that first stitch, we want to make sure that we're finding the top of the last stitch from our previous row. So we're going to skip one, into that next, insert with a single crochet, forming our first chain space for this row. And again, chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet, 
chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet. And we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around. All right, so we made our way all the way around with our first moss stitch row, and we need to close off the row. All we're gonna do is slip stitch into that first chain that we made when we started off this row to close it off. So just into that first chain, insert, pull through everything, and now we're gonna be doing more moss stitch rows. So let's chain two. Oh, let's do another chain, there we go, and flip our work. And we do wanna make sure that we're flipping our work after every row. And just like before, we're going to be skipping that first stitch, which it should be a single crochet from our previous row, into that following stitch, which should be our chain space. Go ahead and separate it if you need to. Insert with a single crochet, that creates our first chain space for this row, and then continue. So chain one, skip a stitch into the following, single crochet, and that's basically it. We're gonna continue to do this, making our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, chain two, flip our work, and then repeat with no increases or no decreases until we have a sleeve portion that reaches about one inch above our elbow. And then I will meet you back so that we can do some decreases. Now a really quick tip that I just wanna mention, just like for the main body portion, we wanna make sure that we are not overlooking that last chain space from our previous row, because it can very easily be lost. And if we don't work in there, our numbers will be off and our sleeve will actually start to decrease accidentally. So just make sure that you're keeping count of each of your rows. So I am back with the first portion of my sleeve. I have a total of 29 rows, and my length is just about six and a half inches or 17 centimeters. Now from here, we're going to continue on with length, but we do want this sleeve to be nice and snug on us, so we're gonna be doing a few decreases. Now the decreases that you do is going to be all dependent on you. So if you want yours to get a little bit tighter, you're going to do more rows of decreases, or if you want yours to be a little bit looser, you're going to spread out your decreases a little bit more. I'm just gonna be showing you guys how to do the decrease, and just to give you an idea, let you guys know how many decreases I actually do. So, to get started on our following decrease row, we're all going to chain two and flip our work. So all we're going to do for our decrease after our chain two is skip that first stitch, which is the same as all of our other rows, so it's that chain space, and then we're gonna do a decrease of three single crochets, into that following chain space, into that next single crochet, and then into that following chain space as well. So skip that first stitch, which is the top of that last single crochet from our previous row. Into that following stitch, which is that chain space, we're gonna insert, pull through, into that following stitch, insert, pull through, and into the stitch right after that, insert, pull through. When we have those four loops, yarn over, pull through all four. And that is our decrease of three single crochets, and that is it. From here, we're gonna continue to chain one, skip a stitch, which our following stitch should be our following single crochet, and then single crochet into the next, which should be a chain space, so that is per usual. Everything else is going to be the same, so just continue on with our mesh stitch row, and when we reach the end of the row, we're going to slip stitch into that chain space, chain two, flip our work, and then do more moss stitch rows. Now, right before I let you guys go, I want to remind you that at the beginning of this row, remember we did our chain two. We skipped that first stitch, which was a single crochet from our previous row, and then we did our decrease. That chain two that we have, it's a little hard to see, still counts as our first chain space for this row. So make sure that you're not accidentally excluding this chain space when doing our other rows. Otherwise, our numbers are going to be a little bit off or we're going to be accidentally decreasing more than we actually need to. So let me just show you guys how often I do my decreases. So I have my other sleeve already all finished. Since the first half of my sleeve was already pretty close to being tight around my arm already, I didn't want to do too many decrease rows after another, otherwise it'll get too tight too quickly. So all I did was do a decrease row into every 10th row. So for those of you that have my numbers, I had a total of 29 rows for the first half of my sleeve. Then for my 30th that I just showed you, I did a decrease row. Then from there, from 31 to 39, I did regular mesh stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. And then into my 40th stitch, I did another decrease row and I continue that until I got the length of the sleeve that I want. But like I said, if you need to decrease more frequently or if you want a tighter fit or looser fit, you guys don't need to do a decrease into every 10th row. You can do every every row if you want, every 5th, every 20th, whatever you guys feel fit. 
whatever is comfiest for you. But all we're going to do is just decrease into any row that we deem necessary until we get the length of the sleeve that we want. And I'm going to continue to do this until my sleeve reaches about mid forearm because I do want to have a longer cuff. But once we have the length of our sleeve all finished up, I will meet you back. So I am back with the decrease portion of my sleeve. I have a total of 69 rows and my sleeve length is 15 and a half inches or 39 centimeters. And now we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. Now I'd like for my cuff to be about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters, so a little bit longer. So I'm gonna make a chain of 25. Now that we have our chain, let's do our first double crochet row. So we're all gonna start by blocking off that last chain and doing a chain three. That chain three doesn't count as a stitch, we just want the height. And now we're all going to yarn over, preparing for a double crochet. And we're gonna insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the fourth chain from our hook. We are going to insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that one more time. Yarn over into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and we're gonna continue putting one double crochet into every chain. So I've just made my way all the way down with my first double crochet row, and now we're gonna connect it into the base. So all we're gonna do is count up the next two available stitches. Here's my first, here's my second. I'm going to insert my hook into that second available stitch with a slip stitch, and now our first double crochet row is connected. Now we're going to work our way up to the following row. So all that's gonna be is slip stitching up the next two available stitches into the base to get the height that we need. So find that next available stitch. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook with a slip stitch, and then we're gonna slip stitch into that following stitch into the base as well. And none of those slip stitches count as a stitch that's just to connect it into the base, and we're gonna flip our work. And now do back loop double crochets all the way down. And now we're gonna do our first back loop double crochet. So yarn over. We're gonna insert our hook into that last stitch from our previous row's back loop, not into any of those slip stitches. So into that first stitch, insert into that back loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert into that next stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and that's it. We're gonna continue putting one back loop double crochet into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. When we do, chain three and put one back loop double crochet into every stitch and I'll meet you back at the base to connect it once more. So we are back and we have just finished one, two, three rows and now we're gonna connect it into the base. So just like how we connected our row one, we're gonna count up the next two available stitches. So here's my first, here's my second available stitch. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there to close off my odd number row. And then just to work my way up to our even number row, slip stitch into those next two stitches into the base. Remembering none of these slip stitches count as a stitch. And flip our work. And now we're going to put one back loop double crochet into every stitch again, and that's it. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches into the base left to work into. When we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. So I've made my way all the way around with my back loop half double crochet rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base and now we're gonna seam it all up. And this is going to be a single crochet seam just like our sides, so let's flip our work wrong side out. And since we already know how to do this, let's just do the first one. Let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel. Then find that first stitch into the back panel and single crochet them together. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. And now that both of our sleeves are all finished up, we are all done. The last thing we're gonna have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.